Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, give the Sunday school class teachers a hand clap. Amen. And you know, you just got to give God the hand clap. He gets all the glory, the honor, the praise. But I just feel like today somebody's going to get set free in this place. I feel like today the devil's had you in torment and tormented you to the point that uh, you just feel like giving up, giving in, and quitting. But see, that's the enemy's trap this morning to do those things. But you know, we have got power over the enemy this morning. Hallelujah. I said we've got power over the enemy. But before we get started, uh, I just want to obey the Lord and because it's not about me. It's nothing about me. It's all about him. If you come and you see me, you've seen nothing. But if you hear the Lord through me and see the Lord in me, you have found everything come this on. morning. But Brother George, I want to get you to push play on that. I've already got it set. And I want y'all to listen to this song. I know that we get all excited about Caleb, you know, getting excited about this song. But we need to listen. The Lord wants us to listen to this song this morning. He wants you to hear hear what he is trying to say to you this morning and then we're going to move on into the word praise the lord go ahead brother <clears throat> listen to the words of this song god's good everything, everything good, good. Everything, right. everything holy everything right come on church i feel the holy ghost in here the world. 
Come on now. What God's got for you. Preach you see, God's man. got a plan, but it's up to us if we allow stinking thinking to come into our mind, then that plan of God will not prevail. But I tell you, when we take authority over the enemy, over our mind, the stinking thinking that goes on in our mind, God said He builds up. He don't come to tear down. So when somebody calls you up, trying to pull you to their side, and it ain't right, it ain't holy, it ain't good, it ain't God, you better cut them off. You better tell them the word. You better tell them like it is. Because you ain't doing nothing but putting that spirit in your life. And they ain't going to get free if somebody don't help them. Hallelujah. I said if somebody don't help them. Stinking thinking. The Bible says... Yes, come on. Praise the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost in yes. this place this morning. I tell you, it's a little bit hard to be still. It's a little bit hard to be quiet. But you know, I told the Lord a long time ago, if I have to look crazy and foolish, I'll do what he wants me to do. You know, some may say, well, why didn't she play that song? Because the Lord told me to. Yes. The Lord wants somebody to hear what he's wanting to tell them this morning. He wants to deliver you from stinking thinking. It says in, in Proverbs... 23, let me find it so I don't quote it wrong. Proverbs 23. Bless the Lord. And the thing about it is, I was sitting home studying, and it seemed like every time you go to do something, I'm telling you, I was trying to study that phone wrong 20 times. I ain't exaggerating a bit. I thought, Lord, I know I'm on target because the devil don't want me to get this. It don't want me to get what God's trying to say. Come on, I, how many of you? I know we've all had stinking thinking. I've had some stinking th thinking myself. But you see, God will deliver you of stinking thinking if you want to be free of it. But there's a choice that comes in the picture. It's your decision today if you want to be free of stinking thinking. And I'm going to tell you how to get free of the stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. I find Proverbs 23 and 7. Bless her Lord. Touch her Jesus. Going. Proverbs 23 and 7. Bless her Lord. There we go. <coughs> As you think in your heart, so you are, the Proverbs is telling us this morning. That tells me that my life is going to go in the direction of my thoughts. Those thoughts that I allow to linger in my mind, and then what happens is they get in your mind, thoughts. Do. And when the thoughts get in your mind, and if we allow them to get in our heart, that's the direction we're going to go. See? Come on, sis. You see, if we're going to be everything God has intended for me to be or you to be, come on now. We got to take captive of the things that are going on in our mind. I can't take captive over your thoughts. You can't take captive over mine. I can tell you what the Bible says and how to think about it and how to think upon it and, and all this, but I can't make you take captive of what you're thinking. Only you have that power in, in Jesus to take captive of those thoughts. We have to take captive of the thoughts that are, are ruling our lives. See, thoughts will rule your lives. You hang out with somebody long enough and you'll see what's ruling their life. You'll see where there's, there's things there in their life that, that's been there forever. Come on, that's man. ruling them to the point that's ruining them. That's ruining them out as a witness. It's ruining them. See, the yeah. enemy wants to ruin your, your reputation. He wants to ruin who you your character. He wants to destroy you. He is not our friend. He comes to kill and steal and destroy the child of God. But we've got power and victory over the enemy. We don't have to let the enemy destroy us. We've got power over him. But if we're going to be everything God has intended for us to be, we've got to take captive of the things that are going on in our mind. We have to take captive of the thoughts that are ruling our lives. You see, we have to take captive of these thoughts because we don't want these thoughts pushing us around. How many of you ever let thoughts push you? I've let thoughts push me around. Come on. I mean, just have me so upset because of the thoughts. You'll find yourself, when you're having thoughts, the wrong thoughts, you'll find yourself depressed. You'll find yourself miserable, angry, upset. You'll See, these thoughts, it has to start with a thought. 
The enemy starts in our mind. We have to take captive of these thoughts because we don't want these thoughts pushing us around. We want to push our thoughts around. We want our lives to go in the direction of our thoughts. And your life will go in the direction of your thoughts. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that we have to be on guard what we are thinking about. Very careful. Because, see, you can have one little bitty thought. How many of you know if you ever bought a bag of potatoes and one's rotten, mm -hmm. you don't get the rotten one out. It it's going to ruin the whole bunch. It will. Truth. We've got to be careful of what we allow to go on in our mind. Yep. And you know, if you want your life to go in a certain direction, you got to start thinking that direction. You got to start thinking positive. You got to start thinking good. You got to start thinking holy. You got to start thinking right. You got to start pushing your life in that way by the thoughts you're thinking. See, if you need victory today, start thinking overcoming thoughts. I remember going up a ladder one time, and I've told this before because it's a true story. I don't like heights. We went on vacation on the 11th floor one time, and it took me two days to get out to the balcony. I hear you. I'm not joking. Me too. <laughs> but I wanted my flag had fell off the house, and we live in a two-story house, and it was really up there. And I remember thinking, Derek ain't got time to put this flag up. I got to get this flag up. I got to get it up there. Come on. So I started up the ladder. When I started up the ladder, I started thinking about falling. Uh -huh. I started thinking about what could happen to me if I got to the top of that ladder, and, and that I could break something and hurt myself, and all these thoughts come into my mind. But as I got back down from the ladder, because I wasn't going to go up, because fear had gripped me. So I started back up the ladder, and as I began to go up the ladder, I began to say, in Christ Jesus, I can do all things. Come on. I began to quote the Word of God. I got to the top of that ladder. I got that flag hung that day, all because of my thought change. But if I kept thinking, I can't do this, I'm going to fall, I'm going to hurt myself, you know, I would have never went up the ladder. Does that make sense? Yes, if you don't change the way you think in the direction of God's will for your life, you will never get to what God's got for you. Right. See, God, see, we got to start thinking, overcoming thoughts. If there's errors in your life when you feel defeated, <clears throat> how many of us ever felt defeated? Yes. Come on. You feel down? Oh, boy. Yep. Start thinking, overcoming thoughts. Start saying, if God be for me, who can be against me? He overcame. Jesus overcame so that I could overcome. In fact, he's called me more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. See, we don't have excuse for our thoughts. We can do all things through Christ Jesus, and we are more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. We've got to learn to recognize those thoughts that are trying to defeat us. See, our enemy ain't flesh. I'm not your enemy. Come on now. The devil's your enemy. The spirits that he plays on the earth with is your enemy. We've got to reckon. When you recognize, it took me a long time to recognize that Sister So and So wasn't my enemy. Come on it took now. Took me a long time to get that. Yep. Finally, one day I think God just smacked me real hard, and I realized, hey. I got it, God. I got it. Amen. <clears throat> We're not my enemy. He or she's not my enemy. The devil is my enemy. <clears throat> he wants to use things to hinder me. He wants to put thoughts in my mind about my brother or my sister so that he can cause division in the body. Yeah. Amen. You've got to recognize that you're not fighting a person. You're fighting spirits, principalities, wickedness in high places. You're fighting things that you're really unaware of. <coughs> because the Bible tells us that God builds. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But it all starts with a thought in your mind. It does. That's where it starts. And grows. See, God wants us to know this morning... That there are strategies and schemes that want to come against us so that we can't fulfill our destiny. If I had to give in to the thoughts that I've had since we've been in the ministry, I would have done sit down. Come on now. I would have done stayed home. I would have done backslid. 
if I give in to the thoughts of the enemy. Because see, you have thoughts, but it's up to you what you do with a thought. That's the truth. You can either take the thought and you can cast it down. <laughs> when it comes against the word of God, you know it's not God. Yep. That's how you know what thought you're having, if it's a wrong thought or a right thought. Because the Bible says to love thy neighbor as thyself. I want everybody to love me. Don't you? Yep. And I love everybody. We need to treat our neighbor as we treat ourselves. As we want to be treated. You see, God is love. The devil is a division <coughs> and hate and destroys. <clears throat> Maybe you have low self-esteem. And on. someone planted a seed of thought in your life. And it's built up. And it's built itself <coughs> up. And it's grown. Come That's on. for somebody this morning. And the good news that the Lord said, He said, you can change. You can change that very thing in your life. You can change your life by changing your thinking. But it's up to you and I this morning. No one can change our thoughts for us. They can tell us all day long we can do it. We can do all things. But until you receive that in your heart, your mind and your heart, you won't overcome. But until we take responsibilities for what's going on in our own thought life, we will never get to the place we want to be. Come on, sis. See, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4 and 23. Let's read that. I didn't have time to write all these scriptures down. 4 and 23, it says, Keep your heart with diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. See, everything you do flows from your heart. If you allow the wrong thoughts to linger, guess where they're going to go? In your Come heart. Come on. Then they'll create. When they get in your heart, they're going to create an attitude that you don't even want. God never said that it would be easy. He never said we wouldn't go through trouble. But he did say, be of good cheer. Be of good thought, for I have overcome the world. You see, fear, anxiety, worry, <coughs> these are feelings <coughs> that frustrate us and cause us to react in a wrong way. Have you ever reacted out in, acted out in, in fear? <coughs> they try to control our lives. You see, that's because of what we are thinking about. That's right. I recall a time I thought I was going to die. I literally thought, the devil done told me it was over. You're going to die. Mom says, tell he me. was lying to me. And I was giving him all the room and board up here that I could give him. And I remember one night we was at Pizza Hut eating and I had to leave the room and go to the car because I thought I was going to die. I couldn't breathe. I didn't know what was going on, but I literally, I thought I was going to pass out. Come on, I was under a major attack. So I Come go to the car, and all I needed to do was to begin <laughs> to pray. I told the kids in Derek, stay in here. I'm, I'm going to the car. I got in the car, and the thing I did, I found me some preaching on the radio. I couldn't turn them di turn, hit that button fast enough to Come get on. to me some, some word. And then I began to pray. And you know, as I began to pray and hear the word and, and just focus on God and get the fear, because that's what it was. It was fear dwelling, trying to give me dwell, letting fear dwell in my mind. And, and as I began to do that, that thing began to lift. I began to feel better, and, and I began to praise God and thank Him. And, and, and you know, God turned everything around right then and there in that Come car. Come on, did. Just me and Jesus. And then I came to church and and, and this might have been before or after, I can't really remember. This was a period of time. It didn't ha it just wasn't over in a night. Something I fought for about a month. Yeah. Went to the doctor. The doctor said, she said, I'm gonna put you on a heart monitor and and, and I'm gonna let uh, uh, we're gonna for the weekend and we're gonna see if it's your heart. And she said, But uh, but I kind of feel like it may be anxiety, so I'm gonna put you on these pills. 
And when you start to feel that way, you take this pill and it's going to help you. I said, yes, ma'am. Thank you. I was excited about getting some help. Come on. So I began to tear. Every time I'd feel that way, I'd begin to run to that pill bottle and I'd take a pill. And, that, and sure enough, I'd get calm and it would relax me and I'd be just fine. Well, I got to noticing something. I got to noticing that I, I was becoming more dependent upon a pill bottle than I was on Jesus. I began to becoming more drawn to the pill bottle than I was to Jesus. So what did I do when the Holy Ghost spoke to me? I went over there and I took that pill bottle and I said, in the name of Jesus, you will not have control over my mind anymore. And I went to the bathroom and I took that pill bottle top off and I flushed them pills down that drain. Come on, come on. You see that enemy. There's so many people addicted to drugs today because of fear. Yes. <clears throat> but it was fear that was controlling me. So I flushed them pill bottles down and I think it was later on I came to church and, and, and Sister LaVon didn't have a clue. I never told nobody what I was going through because I'm just like that. I tell Jesus and my husband. Come on. She got up and she prophesied over me. She said, you shall live and you shall not die and you shall declare the works of the Lord. And I knew then that it was God. I knew God. See, that fear had to leave. It had to go because it could no longer reign in my mind. And after that, see, just one word from God today, church, will change your whole circumstance, can change your whole life, can turn you around if you'll accept it today. Don't look at me. I'm not up here to bash and batter. I'm up here to give the word. I'm up here to help you to grow and to be the child of God that he'd have you to be. Bless but you. fear, anxiety, and worry, they come to control our lives. You see, that's because of what we are thinking about. We can't have conversation with fear and anxiety. We can't talk to worry. We've got to push it out. <laughs> When the fear comes, push it out. Put God's word there in the place of the fear that's coming in your mind, your thought. When he's trying to tell you you're going to die or you not, or you got cancer. How many of you have told you many times you're going to die, you got cancer? Can I tell you God does not make you sick? God is not the author of making you sick. It's the devil and he wants to make you think you sick for a reason. Let me tell you, take authority over that disease. He promised not to put those things on us. Come on. But you can't have conversation with fear and anxiety. And we can't talk to worry. We've got to push it out. Don't pull up a chair and have a conversation. I was having a conversation with fear, wasn't I? I was just letting it take me out, take me down, making <coughs> me think I was going to die. And, 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 and it, it was bad. Come on, sister. It was bad. <coughs> We've got to push it out. How are we going to push it out? How are we going to push out anxiety, worry, and fear? Anybody got that answer? That's a question. Do you know how to push those things out? You can't do it in yourself. You got to do it through the Word of God. That's why it's so important that we have the Word of God and we know the Word yeah. of God and we know that that Word of God, when we speak the Word of God, it's got power and, it, and the devil has to flee when we submit to him. When we submit to God, the enemy has to flee. Don't take what the enemy's been trying to put up on you. Come on. You don't got to accept it. Don't have conversation with it. Push it out. No devil by Jesus stripes. He bore. I am healed. Yes. I am healed. Yes. Gone. Amen. We dwell on something long enough. It'll get down in our heart. And it will become a part of who we are. Amen. If you think you're sick long enough, he just about had me. But I ran to Jesus. <coughs> just like that woman with the issue of blood. You know, have you ever been where you just couldn't take no more? You just felt like, I just can't take no more. It just seems like it's over here, it's over there, it's in front of me, it's behind me, it's even sitting on me. Have you ever felt that way? Like Come you're on. about to just... Explode. Yep. I've been there, done that. Might have even exploded a few times. Amen. But you know what? When you get to that point of pressure, cry out to Jesus. He will run to you and he will rescue you. He will not leave you hanging and he won't leave you there. 
In that Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so he, can, he, he, he is. We read that. What do you think you are today in Jesus? Do you think you're an overcomer? Do you know you're an overcomer? Do you know that you've been... Uh, uh, You've been born again, and do you know that you've been healed by the stripes Jesus bore on his backs on his back? Do you know this this one? Do you know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord? Do you know this this morning? His word is a promise. You see, if we could ever grasp and you know, I've learned to know this now. I didn't know this either. And some of you may know it, and some of you may not, but this word has power. It does. This word is not just a written on a in a book to not to not do nothing. It has power. Try it. It will work, I promise you. One time we was going through something on 6th Avenue, I'll never forget. Who it was a time, I'm telling you, I done messed up and failed the Lord. And y'all know all about that, all about me, not forgiving myself for a year. Come on, sis. That happened. Uh, a young man that we thought of like a son had died, he wrecked and killed. And, yep. and, and that happened. And, and all my family in the whole house was sick with a virus. And that ha this all happened within like two weeks. Come on. I mean, it felt so bad. And, and, and you know... Come on, sister. It just seemed like there was no break. It seemed like the enemy was just really trying to wear me out <clears throat> and make me quit and turn back. See, that's his job. He wants to wear you out. He wants you to have stinking thinking. But I remember I'd had enough, Sister Lamar. I'd had enough. Enough was enough, enough. I went to my front door and I opened that door and I said, in the name of Jesus, devil, you get out of my house. You are not welcome here. You have been evicted. You got an eviction notice. I plead the blood of Jesus and you got to go, you spirit of sickness and whatever else I prayed. I don't remember. People were walking down the road watching me, but I really didn't care because I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. I was at my breaking point. I was at the point that the pressure was on. I, I just couldn't take no more. But you know what? When I cried out to Jesus and I began to take a thought over those things and I began to change the way I was thinking and put the word on the devil he had to go I had to go he had to go did you hear me church he's got to go when you tell him he's got to go he's got to go in the name of Jesus but you can't fight the enemy on your own come on see the Bible talks in Psalms 1914 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, my strength yeah. and my redeemer. Wow. Come on. God sees our thoughts. He does. He judges them. He is the one that we've got to please. See, if our thoughts please him, then we're doing good. <laughs> but every word and act begins in a thought. Our thoughts form our lives. God knows all of our thoughts. <clears throat> Let us measure them by how God will think of them. In other words, if you're having a thought, and God ain't pleased with that thought, yes. we need to get rid of that thought. Because see, those thoughts can create division. They will. Discord in the body. That's what it can do. Yep. <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the <clears throat> to the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Amen. You see, we can't help, we can't keep thoughts, evil thoughts, from coming. Because thoughts come. I sit here and said, you're not going to have a thought, that's, that's a lie. You're going to have a thought. Some good, some bad. But we do have the power in Jesus to cast down those thoughts. What we see or hear causes our minds to think. But the thought does not become an evil thought until it enters the heart. 
A clean heart refuses to entertain thoughts that would grow into evil. Come on. <clears throat> a clean heart. Did you hear that? <clears throat> a clean heart refuses to entertain thoughts that would grow into evil. The mind thinks, but the heart controls the quality of the thoughts. Bless her, Lord. We should have thoughts of love. When we were going through <clears throat> that with a young man that was like a son to us, he lived with us for a couple of months, really grew close to him. And I remember when he passed, it was very devastating. But I remember at the funeral home, I remember the, 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 the mother and the grandparents and they were so they were so devastated, you know, just and they were blaming this one and that one and we even got blamed. But you know, through that I chose to show love. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta take the lower road. Yeah. You can't always take the top, the high road. We have to humble ourselves. And believe me, God was humbling me at that funeral home. He was humbling me, and you know, and all I could think about, and I thank God because, you know, it showed me that I had a pure heart. Because all I could have thought about, was, well, Lord, if it makes them feel better to blame me and Derek, let them blame us. If it makes them feel better, let them do it, Lord. That was love. And I meant it because they were hurting and they were in pain. But see, if my heart had been evil, I would have retaliated back at them. But thank God for his love. Thank God for the love that he puts in us when we come to know him. He gives us a love that we could not even love our enemies without Jesus being in our life. Because I remember before Jesus ever come into my life, you look at me wrong, I'd smack you. Not that I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But I was mean. But Jesus will change you. When you truly get a head-on collision with God and you get saved and born again... Your heart changes. You're no longer the same. He's washed your sins as far as the east as to the west, and he said he remembers them no more. No more. <clears throat> See, obeying the word of God will make us prosperous. You can't prosper yourself in the Lord. It takes, it's, there's a, there's a song that goes, uh, well, I don't know if I can sing it, but anyway, it's talking about getting to heaven on roller skates. Can't get to heaven on roller skates. Can't climb the ladder and get to heaven. So you can't do it that way. You gotta go through Jesus. You gotta go through Jesus to be prosperous in, 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 in what he's got for you, in, in the way, the way and the good success. I'm not talking about financially prosperous. I'm talking about spiritually growing and prospering in, in what God would have you to do in your life, what God's plan would be in your life. The Bible tells us to dwell upon righteous thoughts. Now, how are we going to overcome the bad thoughts, the thoughts that ain't good and the thoughts that are evil and the bad thoughts? Listen, I've had bad thoughts, but it's what I've done with the bad thoughts. Come on. I either keep the bad thoughts and they get in my heart and then I react on the bad thoughts and everybody around me will see what's in my heart because it's there. You cannot hide it. But the good thing is if you got a bad thought or if you got you, you can get rid of you, you you can get rid of the thought by dwelling upon righteous thoughts. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and 8, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, think on these things. The Bible gives us a roadmap how to overcome thoughts. You start to have a bad thought? I've had thoughts before. Oh no, devil, I cast it down in Jesus' name. I, I know that ain't the, the way it is and I'm not believing your lie. 
in Jesus' name. Casting it down. Not lingering on to it because the more you think of I learned something at the church I was in and under my pastor, Chris. He was um, he was uh, ministering one day and, and I was uh, listening to his ministry ministering and, and something hit me wrong. It didn't hit me right. It just bothered. It troubled me. So I got I got in the car and I got my phone and I called him. And I said, I just want to talk to you about something. See, if we learn to communicate. If we learned to talk to each other, not about each other, we'd be better off. So I called him up and I said, hey, Pastor. I said, you know, you said something this morning in your sermon and I just really, it troubled me and I just really want to know what you meant. And, 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 and I, I, I don't know what else to do, but just talk to you about it. He said, well, let me tell you something. He said, you did the right thing. He taught me something. You did the right thing. You come to me. You came to me right away. See, you don't hang on to that thought. If you got a problem with somebody, go to them and make it right. Go to them and talk about it. Go to them and let them know how you feel. I've had people to come to me and tell me how they feel. And, feel, and I tell you what, I respect them for that because I'd rather somebody come to me and not agree with what I said or did and talk to me to my face than to go behind my back to 20 people and talk about me. See, that's not godly. That's of the devil. Come on. I know, I know God's right. See, that's a trickery of the enemy. He wants to destroy, kill, and steal, and divide, and conquer. But he said, I want you to know that you did the right thing by coming to me. And he began to tell me what he meant and, and how it, whatever else he said. And I said, oh, okay, I got it now. I was, I was, I was, I'm at peace now. He said, well, you did the right thing. He said, because that's why everybody should be. They should come and talk about it and not go to everybody else and talk about it. But come to, to me and talk about it. And he taught me something. So when I got a problem, and don't think I call you because I got a problem, but when I got a problem or a thought that's in my mind and the enemy's tormenting me and he used to do this a lot, I would say, okay, phone, hello, and call him right up and talk to him and that thing would leave and that wouldn't be there no more. Didn't have to say what was bothering me, what was troubling me, what was tormenting me. God just took care of it. But you see, we've got to learn to communicate. The Bible says if you have all to get one another, to go to them. Make it right. Yeah. Don't let the devil play in your mind so long that it was just once upon a time a little hill, but now it's a big old mountain and all kinds of stuff is, is going on in your heart that, that it's caused you to fail God, that it's caused you to not obey God. <coughs> See, we got to make things right because thoughts do grow. Yes, they do. If we think on these things, honest, on things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report, it eliminates the lies, the filthy talk and actions, gossip, unkind words, and many other evil things. It would keep the heart <coughs> pure. Created me a heart, God. Created me a clean heart. Yes. And a right spirit. See, that's what we got to keep. The right spirit, a pure heart. Even I have to do that. And the only way you can do that thing, do that, is by thinking on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report. Amen. See, the pure in heart, the Bible says, shall see God. We cannot follow worldly ways and have godly thoughts. If we feed up on foolish talk, how can God and His ways find a place in our hearts? We've got to eliminate all influences that is contrary to God. Physically, we will become what we feed on. I've heard Derek say it. What you feed will grow. It grows. We become what we feed on and the same is true morally and spiritually. Does your way of thinking differ from God's? In Isaiah 55 and 9 it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. 
and my thoughts than your thoughts. If our thoughts are to please God or be a part of a holy life, they must be higher than those of the natural unsaved man. The lost and dying world is watching us Christians. Watching how we're going to react when we get our feelings hurt. Watching how we're going to react when something goes wrong. Bless the Lord. Here's a thought. The thing is not true because God said so. But God said so because it is true. See, go. God's word is true. And if you're having a hard time this morning with thoughts, and I know there are some here, probably more than one or two, maybe three or four. Most is. But let me tell you, you got victory this morning. You have victory in Jesus this morning over the thoughts. If you've heard the word this morning, then you know how to overcome those thoughts. Even down to the point that sometimes it may take going and talking to the person. Or calling them up just to say, hey, because you're having thoughts. You see, it's the enemy's job. We can't blame the enemy if we react on the thought. It's our own thought because we have a choice this morning. Either we want to grow in God or we want to stay stuck in our thought. Bad thoughts. Negative thoughts. Fearful thoughts. Anxiety. You know, I feel like there's somebody here this morning and you've been battling anxiety and fear and even worry. But God can set you free. Yes. I can't. Amen. But He can. He set me free. He let me know that I didn't have to depend on a pill bottle. That I needed to depend on Him. <coughs> that He was my healer. That He was the one that was that, that, that He held me in His hand. And let me know that, that, that I was more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Come on. That I could do all things through Christ Jesus. And you know, I'm not going to embarrass anybody, but but I, I just dare God, I hate to, I have to obey the Lord. But I want to say this. If you're in here this morning, and Brother Georgia put that song back on. Amen. I think it's one and three. And you're fighting thoughts this morning. Don't be ashamed. Just look at it this way. You're going to get free today. See, the devil wanted to take you the wrong way, the wrong direction, but God has brought the word to take you in the right direction now. The right direction for his plan in your life. Yes. And everybody's quiet, so I know God's working. Come on. Yes. But if you're battling something this morning, if you're having a hard time this morning, don't give the enemy no more place. Make up your mind and, your, and make a choice right now that you're bringing it to this altar and you're going to leave it there and you're going to ask God to help you with these thoughts and to take these thoughts and that you forgive you of these thoughts and that you're going to move on with good thoughts, good, th good thoughts and true thoughts and honest thoughts and of good report thoughts. That's what you're going to yeah. do this morning. So if you're here, I guess this is kind of like an altar call. Thank you, Lord, for that one. See, the devil wants to wants to take what God's got for you, but he's a liar this morning. <laughs>